All right, so before I show you what this absolutely crazy little Wi-Fi hacking device is, a brand new device just landed on my desk and it's got the SDR community buzzing. This is the brand new Porta RF. It's trying to be the next evolution of the Hack RF. It's got a brand new huge screen on it. It's actually super, super thin and it's got an all in one device. There's no Hack RF and the Porta Pack anymore. It's the Porta RF. And I know what some of you may be saying is like, I just got my H4M. Does this device completely replace it? Well, that's what we're gonna figure out today. And if you're brand new to SDRs or software defined radios, by the end of this video, I want you to be just as hyped about them as I am. So today we're gonna take a deep dive into the Porta RF figure out all the features and see exactly how well it stacks up to the H4M. But make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you that mystery device and it's got a secret that I never thought I'd see on a Wi-Fi pen testing tool. Man, I am so psyched to have not one, but two brand new hacking tools to show you guys. All right, let's get at it. All right, so right up top, I wanna to do a really quick disclaimer. Only test your own devices or networks that you're allowed to test. Doing otherwise is super uncool. So this is the Porta RF. It's a brand new device from open source SDR labs and it's absolutely awesome. In fact, this one's actually a prototype. The release version of these has even more features than mine does, which is even cooler. So let's actually switch over to the top-down camera and get a much closer look at it. Introducing the Porta RF from Open Source SDR Labs. Hello. This is an absolutely amazing form factor. It's a little bigger than the traditional H4M, but it's super thin and I don't know, it kind of fits in my hands well. So from starting off, we have the on off switch right there. We have our SD card. We have some status lights over there. And then on the side here, we have USB-C, thank God, and a headphone jack. So let's fire this on. Bam, there we go. We got our LEDs fired up right now. And then you can see right now we're running the latest version of Mayhem firmware. Very, very cool. We have a DFU button on the bottom and a reset, which you don't really need to use too often, but you know, they used to be on the top of the H4M. So if we enter into our menu right here, we have our traditional menu structure here. It is a touch screen that I just spent about five minutes cleaning. So I can go ahead and just press buttons with this little hand eh, back and we can see all of our great features here. Eh, let's see, you can actually control it with the stick right here, so that controls everything side to side. You can press down on things. Let's go back to here. And then we can use the dial as well. So we can go to capture, press that, and then we're going ahead and capturing. So this is a four inch IPS touchscreen, which is a little bit of an upgrade from the 3.2 on the H4M. It's got a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is like 50% more than some of the Hack RFs. The older Hack RF versions did not have the USB-C, which I mean, the H2s were a little buggy. I always had problems when I was using it in Hack RF mode because it just wouldn't really work well and it would keep getting disconnected. So so, you know, just a thing that happens. It is a single board design. I mean, this isn't just one piece of equipment. The other one is actually a Hack RF and a Porta Pack, two totally separate boards that kind of plug together to make one device. That's why this one is so slim and so sleek. It actually gives me like a, a, a mini PS2 vibe or something like that. It's very, very cool. And then the other thing it's gonna have in the future is gonna be an expansion bay. So on the back here, there's gonna be a GPIO expansion, which is super cool. Now, fun fact, I'm not really supposed to talk about it, but we're doing it anyway. This originally was called the Hack PP. The fine folks over at Open Source SDR Lab didn't quite understand the American context of that, so they changed it over to Porta RF. Sorry, Open Source SDR Lab for letting the little secret out, but yeah, it'll be rebranded by the time you get it. So for those of you who've never seen a Hack RF, or in this case, a Porta RF, this thing actually can do a lot of really cool stuff. So first of all, it does have games and stuff. It says Doom. Of course, everything has Doom. Oh, wow, does this work? Uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't work. Actually, I'm trash. Crap, BRB. After these messages, we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. Uh, that was weird. Anyway. Let's explore the receive functions. First, ADSB tracking monitors aircraft transponders in real time. The Mayhem firmware includes specialized receivers, Poxag for pager signals, Radio Sandre, I think that's how it's pronounced, for weather balloons, and this fox hunt tool for directional finding games. If you don't know what fox hunting is, it's basically somebody hides a device that's transmitting a signal and people go around trying to find it. It's very fun. 
you can decode NOAA weather satellites and read tire pressure sensors from vehicles. The protocol support is pretty extensive. The looking glass feature visualizes the entire RF spectrum in real time. Watch how the bandwidth changes as I switch between frequency ranges. The water bandwidth do tend to scan slower because they're capturing way more data. Now, before you start thinking that I'm just showing off the newest, latest, and greatest shiny object that I have, let's compare it to the H2M and see exactly how they square up. So here is the H2M. We'll fire this thing up. The actual physical battery cutoff switch is such an amazing feature that they added to the H2M and they poured it over to the new Porta RF because they used to, the battery would die constantly. It would never have a charged battery. This thing, I had it turned off for a long time, turned it on, fired up, works perfectly. So the form factor on this, so it's, they're different, right? So I'm not gonna say one's more pocketable than the other because they both have their downsides because this one's a lot thicker. So it's hard to say, we'll call them different. Now, this one still does have the SMAs on the bottom to connect a clock that no one ever does. I don't really see myself ever connecting a clock to this, so that's just an idea. It's hard to see because of the exposure, but this has a pretty nice screen on it as well. It's just smaller than this one. So if we go to capture, let's capture the exact same signal on both devices. The Hack RF is recording at 255 megahertz. So switching over to the Porta RF, we're gonna tune into the exact same frequency. Here's where it gets interesting though. See the screen brightness difference? The Hack RF looks kind of washed out, actually because at this exposure level, it's much brighter. The Porta RF still looks pretty good, but it's not as bright. But the real advantage is bandwidth visualization. The Porta RF's wider display shows significantly more spectrum data simultaneously. For outdoor work though, that visibility difference could be the difference between usable and frustrating. Now keep in mind, this is a custom port of the Mayhem firmware, which means the open source SDR lab is going to have to maintain this firmware themselves. Now, this is pretty easy to use one-handed, which is very important. And yeah, this one's pretty easy to use one-handed as well. However, this little nubbin down here is kind of hard to get to. So, you know, if you're out in the field one-handed, it might be a little harder. This is a little bit of a chunkier device. I personally want to port over something to make it so it's this orientation. It still kind of needs two hands, but just an idea because I thought it's, you know, a fun form factor for that. But remember, this has got a much larger battery in it. So that's kind of the reason for the form factor and they wanted to keep it slim. Now, as far as performance goes, the Porta RF does on paper have higher specs and it's got faster SPI. However, in practice, it seems like they both still feel just about the same to me. So that being said, it really comes down to personal preference as to which device you think is gonna be best for you. All right, so that kind of leads us to our mystery device that we have right here, but not before this quick segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for all things PCB design, manufacturer, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and more. Hop on down to PCBWay.com and check out the PCB Instant Quote. You can see all these amazing options down here. You can go up to 14 layers, you can change solder mask to so many different colors and you can even UV print on the board itself. It couldn't be easier and it couldn't be more fun. PCB Way also has agents on staff that will help you every single step of the way. It couldn't be easier. Thank you so much to PCB Way for your continued support. You guys are absolute legends. Let's get back to it. All right, time for something nobody's seen yet. This is the Wave Sentry Pro from Open Source SDR Lab, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Built for authorized security testing and researcher, features include Wi Fi analysis and packet capture for lawful consented assignments. Never use these features against networks you do not own or have explicit permission to test. The Marauder functionality is exactly what you'd expect Bluetooth sniffing, flipper device detection, full Wi Fi reconnaissance. I've got three flippers in the room and it's seeing all of them. Packet monitoring, probe requests, beacon sniffing, it's all here. But then it does this. That's a live FM radio receiver. So if it's receiving FM, that also means that there's an SDR chip in there, which means this could potentially receive way more than just broadcast radio. And that's really interesting. Here's where this device gets absolutely unhinged. It has a thermal imaging camera. Look at this. Low resolution, absolutely, but functional thermal imaging camera on a Wi-Fi hacking tool, that is absolutely insane. Think about the use case here. You could be doing a physical security assessment, the Marauder finds the network vulnerabilities, the thermal camera identifies heat signatures through server rooms, active equipment, even people. And the FM receiver, it's monitoring for RF leakage or communications you shouldn't ignore. 
Is it the perfect device? No. The thermal camera resolution is super low. The radio receiver is basic. And at this point, you're basically paying for the versatility over specialization. But for red team work and security research who need multiple tools in one package, then this thing's pretty unique. If you want to see a full breakdown on the Wave Sentry Pro's capabilities, please let me know in a comment down below. And I'll throw a link for detailed specs down in the description. Also, drop a comment. Tell me which feature surprised you most, the thermal camera or the FM radio. I am genuinely curious. So yeah, that's the Porta RF and the Wave Sentry Pro, two absolutely amazing brand new devices from open source SDR Labs. So what do you think of those two brand new devices? Leave a comment down below. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.